Hey guys, David here and welcome to another video. It's finally time, I'm going to show you all the different materials that the Ratrick Killer Bee can cut and we're going to go into the nitty gritty details of how you can achieve uh, those results. I'm going to show off how I was able to create aluminum parts uh, that are super professional and with a lot of metal removal. I'm also going to show how I cut steel on this machine and all kinds of other materials. But before we get into it, I want to give a big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video and this project. They make super high quality PCBs, which are great for prototyping. You can get uh, 10 pieces up to 10 by 10 centimeters, double-sided, silkscreen, everything for just $5, which is an amazing price. And they also have manufacturing services. So if you're building a CNC and you need some parts manufactured to get it up and running, or if you want to get some 3D printed uh, things in metal, uh, in all kinds of plastics, in resin, all that good stuff, uh, then make sure to check them out at the link down below. Now getting into uh, the machine, uh, I, if you haven't seen it already, I made a video where I go over all the different aspects, all the different options that I chose during my build and why I chose those. Uh, so if you haven't seen that, make sure to go check it out as I will not repeat everything and it will make a lot more sense if you know what I'm working with. But since I made this video, I do want to clarify a couple things and uh, I'll respond to some of your comments. Uh, for one, uh, with the controller board, I noticed that some of you guys have had issues with that board in the past uh, about it just randomly stopping at some point. And uh, while I ha had something like that happen once before uh, already, uh, I just assumed that it was my fault and I did something wrong. But I did notice that uh, sometimes uh, not very often, maybe like half an hour into a cutting job, it would just randomly stop. Uh, but then if you like restarted it, uh, then it would work for many hours at a time. So maybe proceed with caution with the Novo sound uh, board and get something else. Uh, maybe I'll replace it at some point, maybe not. Uh, I'll see how annoyed I get about this issue. And the other thing is, uh, there was a comment asking me to just kind of show uh, the rigidity of this machine, uh, just kind of pulling on the spindle and while this is of course no in no way scientific uh, uh this should give you a pretty good idea of how rigid this is especially if you like compare it to a machine you already have maybe this gives you an idea uh, but i think the much more important bit is about to come where i actually show you the performance and the finishes that i'm able to get with this in the material now i cannot uh, talk about the cutting performance of this machine without talking about the cutting tools i already mentioned that i'm using a uh, 23,000 RPM uh, Chinese spindle, uh, 2 uh, kilowatt, uh, which is plenty. I could easily get away with 1.5 kilowatts. Uh, the spindle sounds like it's barely doing anything uh, when I'm uh, in the cut. But the thing that I also want to talk about is the tools. And uh, I have had great luck uh, with uh, these cheap Chinese uh, carbide end mills uh, from AliExpress. Uh, now, they are the uncoated ones, uh, single flute and in various different sizes and uh, geometries. Uh, somehow uh, the carbide stuff from China seems to be actually really decent. They cost like a dollar or two a piece, depending on the size, uh, which means that if you break a couple of them, it's not the end of the world. Now, could I get an even better finish with something like a Datron tool? Most certainly, but I can break 20 of these uh, for the price of one of the Datron ones. So for, for like acrylic work, I might get one of the polished end mills at some point, but only once I'm really comfortable with the machine and I know I'm not going to break it. Because if I break a $20 tool, I'm going to be a lot more upset than if I break a $2 tool. Now let's start on the, in my opinion, kind of boring side, wood. Uh, Essentially, this machine uh, can go as heavy and as fast as you can get the wood chips out of the way. What I found is the limiting factor uh, for like cutting stuff out of plywood is not uh, the machine's uh, ability to push through it or the spindle's ability to cut enough, but uh, kind of uh, your uh, imagination of how you want to do your cutting that you can actually get the sawdust out. Because if you just pack uh, the slot full of sawdust and then you're recutting chips and then of course it's going to get clogged up and you're going to get stalled and it's going to smell a bunch and uh, ruin your tool. But if you can actually uh, get all the chips out, then well, you can essentially go as fast as you want. Now, I know this is not the most scientific uh, way of uh, talking about it, but I haven't used enough wood on this machine to really give you a better answer. But I've uh, like used the compression bit before at maybe like 10, 15 millimeter depth of cut. Uh, 
full slotting and it worked perfectly fine. Uh, that, that is on like MDF and soft uh, wood, uh, no hardwoods there. You might want to dial it back slightly if you're doing something like uh, walnut or beechwood or something like that. But uh, this machine certainly has enough power and rigidity to easily get through any woodworking job that you have. Moving on to acrylic, uh, using these single flute end molds really is a treat as uh, you can get enough speed going uh, and still have a lot of area to clear away those chips and not get a big melted blobby mess. If you're having trouble cutting acrylic, uh, try going faster. This is, not, this is kind of counterintuitive, uh, but you really want to take a decently sized chip out of the plastic so that you're not just rubbing on it and creating too much friction heat and then it's gonna melt. And once it starts melting, your tool is gonna like glob up and uh, you're not gonna have a good day. A sharp tool going quite fast is allows you to uh, really hog away some acrylic. I'm going at like uh, 20 to 23,000 RPM with something like a four millimeter tool, uh, moving at like 1500 to 2000 millimeters per minute, uh, which is this in freedom units, uh, really uh, give quite decent results. And the step over you can kind of vary depending if you're uh, just hogging away material or if you want a nice finish. For like a finishing pass, you can uh, step down uh, slightly in speed, but you don't really have to do, uh, go too much slower. And depth of cut uh, depends a bit on your tool and uh, what you're trying to achieve, but like five millimeters is easy. Uh, for like a finishing pass, you can also uh, go 10, 15, 20 millimeters. Uh, that should not be an issue at all. Now where my testing got slightly more scientific is when I moved on uh, to uh, aluminum, as this is kind of, uh, challenging material for many hobby CNC's, but if you have the right speeds and feeds, the right tools, then you can really get some impressive stuff done. Now I uh, did this little uh, test piece where I started off first with a uh, five millimeter depth of cut. This is all uh, 2D adaptive strategies, uh, which if you're not familiar with it, uh, go look up Fusion 360 2D adaptive, or I guess most other cam software also has that. This is gonna save you bacon uh, as it just means that the tool engagement is a lot smoother and uh, for machines that don't have as much rigidity as a big VMC, uh, using the adaptive strategy really means that you can get a lot better finishes and your uh, machine is not gonna deflect nearly as much because it just tries to kind of ease into the material and not uh, like just kind of plunge in, uh, which gives great shocks, which this machine cannot handle very well. But going to the adaptive eyes, uh, first went super uh, casual with all of these, I believe, are at 1500 millimeters a minute, uh, 23,000 RPM. That gives me a step over uh, a feet per tooth uh, mean of about uh, 0.05 uh, millimeters roughly. That's about 2,000. Uh, I found that that works quite well. You can maybe go a bit more aggressive, uh, but that's what I use for most of the testing. Then I started with a step over first of uh, 0.1 millimeters, which is super uh, conservative. That worked very easily. You can barely hear the machine work. Uh, moved up 0.2 millimeter, very easy. 0.3 millimeter. Uh, you can slowly start the machine, uh, like he hear it working and the chips look great. But that's what I ended up using for kind of my everyday when I don't really I'm too worried about speed, but I just want to make sure that it actually works and I can uh, leave it running for an hour uh, without me being worried about the tool uh, clocking up or something if it gets a bit warmer. But uh, for like more aggressive testing, I also went uh, all the way to 0.5 millimeter step over, uh, at which point you can certainly hear uh, the machine speak a bit, and, but still worked pretty well. And at that point, it really is hogging away material quite quickly. Now, of course, if you're comparing the, this metal removal rates uh, to something that you can get on a house VMC or even a Tormach, then of course this is nothing, but those cost like a five to 10 times as much uh, on the low end. So you can't really compare that either. And where it really gets interesting is uh, since five millimeter depth of cut worked so well, I decided to try 10 millimeters. And to my surprise, that worked quite well. 0.1 millimeter uh, step over once again, uh, no problem at all. 0.2 millimeter, uh, there you can kind of start uh, hearing it work. Uh, I did see that uh, it, there is a bit more uh, gumminess uh, to it almost, or like, like the chips wanting to stick to the wall or the, to the tool. 
So uh, for going higher, uh, I did uh, sit next to it with an air blast on the tool. Uh, now like, you could also install that onto your machine, uh, like in a, just a compressed air blast. Uh, and that helped a lot. Uh, that gave a lot cleaner cut and the machine sounded a lot happier as well. I moved all the way up to a 0.5 millimeter step over at 10 millimeter depth of cut. And that, that was the limit. Uh, you could really hear the tool starting to uh, come up almost, uh, have to compress uh, right up against it. And it worked, but that was not a comfortable cut anymore. I would not use that on like a production part, but for testing, very impressive. I also went ahead and tried some different geometries, some like um, 3D profiling and uh, I'm not an expert at that. I'm still very much learning CNC and CAD and CAM. Uh, so uh, you can probably get better finishes than that if you uh, play a bit more with all of the different settings. Uh, but like I have this like uh, dish uh, kind of feature where I just did a, a parallel uh, toolpath on it and I also did uh, a nice uh, outside uh, radius that I profiled with a ball uh, end mill. Uh, this is a two flute, uh, four millimeter ball end mill that I used for these cuts and they turned out nice. Now, uh, it wasn't particularly fast, but that's mainly due to me not having much experience with those tool paths and not knowing how much step over do I really need. Uh, but this machine uh, can certainly do a simultaneous three axis, no problem for a kind of a 3D machining. And this, I guess, uh, brings me to my uh, pro big project that I've been working on. Uh, now, I was hoping to have this video out a long time already. I'm working on a keyboard and I'm finally uh, doing what uh, I've been wanting to do for years, and that is making a fully uh, billet machined uh, case for it. And here you can see the first part done. Now, this was not easy. Uh, it started out as about 500 grams of aluminum. Uh, now it's about 70 grams of aluminum. So a lot of metal removal. Uh, first, I hopped out the insides, uh, leaving out uh, like some standoffs, some holes, uh, all the different geometries for it to, to snap together later. The hogging out of uh, the inside material, that took about 50 minutes maybe, uh, but it's about, I don't know, two, 300 uh, grams of material that I removed. Then had to be, uh, get a bit uh, creative with work holding and I actually uh, milled in some uh, pockets into uh, the MDF and then screwed it from the bottom like the knife makers uh, like to do. And then I was able to uh, machine the top, uh, cut out all of uh, these uh, key holes and I actually uh, had to use a one millimeter end mill in the corners and surprisingly it didn't break a single one. Now I did scale back the speeds uh, and feeds quite a lot. I did 0.1 millimeter step over and only about uh, 800 millimeters uh, uh, feed rate, but that worked great. Also adaptive strategy, and then I used it to uh, profile it, and it just came out great. On the outside, I went over with the ball end mill uh, for a nice uh, radius, and well, it could probably use a bit more work in the tool pathing uh, area and the cam. Uh, it turned out great. To finish it, uh, on top I used the same 4mm end mill as I don't have a proper tool setter, I didn't want to switch it out too much, otherwise I probably would have used maybe like an 8mm end mill to just go slightly faster, but uh, the finish that I got off of the single flute 4mm end mill, which is not great for facing, uh, like, like a 2 flute uh, 8mm uh, end mill or, would be a lot better suited for this, but still I got a great result. Uh, it's very smooth and you can see some tooling marks, uh, but I'm very happy with this. And since some of you asked about the accuracy, this is not the most scientific test, but uh, these inside features are supposed to be 14 millimeters. Using just some calipers, measuring various features on this part, it is all uh, definitely within uh, 0.1 millimeters. Uh, most of it, I would uh, say, depending on how I exactly measure it, uh, is a lot closer. Um, more like 0.05 uh, or even uh, better. And a lot of that definitely also has to do with your tool paths and deflection. You definitely want to do like a spring pass uh, for all the finishing passes as there is going to be some deflection in the tool uh, since it's not a perfectly rigid machine. But for uh, being a fairly inexpensive hobby machine, uh, I'm perfectly happy with these uh, results. And it's definitely very much usable for any DIY hobby project. If you need micron precision, then uh, 
well, maybe a Killaby is not uh, the right machine, but then you're also not talking about a thousand, two thousand uh, dollar machine, but uh, twenty, thirty, hundred thousand uh, dollar machine at the very least. Uh, so, considering everything, that is a very great result. And then, uh, while I personally don't have that much of a use for it, and I have a, a bigger CNC mill as well, I tried some mild steel and. Uh, did similar recipe as uh, for the aluminum adaptive, which just uh, only did a 0.1 millimeter step over and a slightly uh, reduced the uh, spindle and cutting speed, and well, it worked great. Uh, I have not gone through and did a bunch of details testing, but since I don't know much about steel uh, and I'm only cutting dry at the moment, uh, I don't even. This is some sort of mild steel I got at the hardware store. I don't know exactly what it is. Uh, but I can tell you, uh, it can definitely cut mild steel, and if you want to do anything uh, in steel, then you uh, probably want to uh, play around with the settings a bit. Uh, but I was able to just kind of take the aluminum settings, dial it back by 50%, and I had a pretty decent uh, starting point. So in conclusion, I am, I'm, to be honest, uh, blown away. Uh, I was hoping uh, that this machine would be uh, pretty capable based on it having linear rails everywhere and uh, using uh, lead screws instead of belts, uh, but it has far surpassed my uh, expectations. It is at the point where, uh, because my other mill is still not perfectly set up and I haven't spent much time on it, uh, this machine actually almost cuts better than my big BF30 milling machine. and. Uh, the kinds of results I'm getting uh, are very reliable uh, with some good tooling and uh, good cutting res uh, res recipes using uh, all adaptive strategies. Uh, milling aluminum parts is no issue at all and as long as you don't uh, need to hog out big chunks of metal, uh, this machine can do great things. Of course, it also always depends on uh, like how you build it out. If you're just using a wood router, then uh, you probably cannot expect quite as uh, much accuracy since those a lot of the time have a lot more run out and more play in the spindle itself uh, so your finishes might be a bit worse but uh, i've had some people uh, reach out to me uh, with their killer bees and uh, what they have been able to achieve and even with using fairly cheap wood routers i've seen uh, results in aluminum that look very comparable uh, to what i'm uh, getting so uh, the solid base that this has definitely is a great starting point for any of your projects. And it's not even like much more expensive than uh, many of the V-slot uh, based uh, kind of roller wheel belt uh, machines uh, that you get. So if you have any more questions, leave them down in the comments and make sure you subscribe since this is definitely not the last video featuring it. Uh, speaking of which, this video should hopefully also be out soon. Uh, where I built the keyboard and uh, mill a bunch of parts on this machine. So if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe. Also go check out PCBWay, they are a great uh, resource and have been supporting this project all along and of course supporting the keyboard project, uh, which makes it possible that I can uh, spend my uh, free time playing with these machines instead of having to work to be able to afford to play with these machines. So with that said, thank you guys for watching, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you guys next time.